So Sarah Boone was found guilty. We are entering our last installment of revisiting her interrogation, and we're going to be completely looking at it through a totally different lens at this point, and we're going to do all that fun stuff in today's video. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the Sofa. As you can see, the Sofa's not here, but psh, I'm still here. If you're new to the channel, my name's Paul. I do appreciate you coming along to the sofa or the pretend sofa, the invisible sofa, whatever you want to call it. And if you're not new, thanks for coming back. What's a nice person like you doing at a trashy channel like this? <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. If you do follow me regularly, you'll know I've been on the road. I've been visiting with my cousin. We've had an amazing time. She is at High Point Furniture Market, so I'm here with her. And we've been following the case, Sarah Boone and whatnot. So I wanted to finish up some of the things that I was doing before we got kind of sucked into the daily trial and all that kind of stuff. And specifically what that is in this video is going to be the last installment of revisiting the interrogation with like what we know now. But this is so suiting because it's like the last bit of the interrogation. I think there's like what maybe 30 minutes we're going to be reviewing. But we now know that she's guilty, right? So it's a whole secondary lens that we're able to look at this through. Like we've seen it all, right? We've heard her story, all that stuff, right? So the way this video is going to work is I'm going to put it up on the screen here and and we're just going to review it. Now, if you've been watching my little series of revisiting this, and you'll know, I'm not picking out the highlights of this, anything at all. We are literally watching this verbatim, moment by moment, awkward silence by awkward silence, <laughs> okay? Now, where we're entering into here is this is towards the end, right? So this is where, if you again, if you are just joining in on this, this is like the fifth one of this. She's now getting to the point of being like, so, uh y'all gonna arrest me here like what's going on here right it's getting to that awkward silence before the little jewelry comes out around her wrist so there's that now if you're completely new to this case just Google suitcase Sarah Boone, and that's what you're going to need to do. This video is not meant to be a deep dive into it, but just know that she was convicted of taking the life of her boyfriend, George Torres. Somehow she got him into a suitcase. He begged for his life. She denied that. She left him in the suitcase. She went upstairs. This is all allegedly her story. We're not really sure what really happened. But she went to sleep. She woke up the next morning, and he had succumbed to suffocation in the suitcase. She forgot that she recorded herself berating him on the phone. The detectives found it, and they confronted her in this interview that we're watching and so there's that's the gist of it right i have like a playlist of probably 50 videos of it so that being said let's go ahead and get into the first clip that's not the situation but it's trying to depend on me okay. that was not my intent but it's trying to depend on me so however or whatever it is i need to do in order for that to be proven then i need to do so which is why i'm trying to get my ducks in a row right completely did not age well right one of the things that's so interesting and again if you followed this case with me or you followed not with me but just followed it and you saw her time on the stand very different demeanor right in my opinion this is the real sarah and when i say the real sarah i believe that sarah wears several masks and i think that this is more of her authentic self here now i forgot to say this in the beginning of the video so let me just, let me just go ahead and do that for those that are new i ain't no therapist i ain't no psychiatrist i ain't a cop I ain't a detective i'm not a secret service agent i ain't none of that fancy credentialed stuff is what i'm getting at okay only credentials we got up in here is the sofa, which isn't even there, okay? Some sass, and at times some you know, self-diagnosed personality disorders. That's a whole other video, okay? But what I am getting at is, these are just my opinions, so I'm not credentialed to be, you know, whatever. This is just, you know, years of watching this stuff and years of hanging out with y'all on the sofa watching these things here. So just know that or whatever going into it. Now, all that being said, my little disclaimer, you know, the whole thing we're about the different masks that she wears, it's like she has... And as we all do, right? We all have different personas that we put forth, our public one, our family one, whatever, right? However, here where you're seeing her go, basically like, what do I need to do to take care of this? What do I need to do to get the expired coupon taken? Where's the manager? This is the where's the manager moment, right? We've been trying to sell the idea for what, an hour and a half here, leading up to this moment. We're not getting what we want, where's the manager? Now we are at a no. You know, she's talking about this is pinned on me, this and that. And at this point they've shown her the video of her berating him in the suitcase. Now. 
remember when this first came out and probably with him as well here we don't know what other videos they've seen we've now seen the other video evidence okay it's not good so imagine if these cops just the suitcase video alone was bad right imagine if these cops these detectives who we've seen get on the stand had seen the other video evidence that we have seen at this point in this thing you know they were looking at her like girl <laughs> This is bad, right? This is super bad. They're just showing her this. So I would have loved to have known what like forensic digital evidence they had seen at this point. Let's keep going. So that's why I'm asking what the next step is other than me getting my nails swabbed. I mean, you want me to tell you how to not be accused of a crime? Is that what you're asking? Like, I don't know what you... I'm want. trying to prepare myself for whatever may need to be done so I can... Mm -hmm. I, I guess stick up for myself. I mean, I think you're doing just fine. You came, you talked. I just don't want you guys to, again, show up and Lucas is in the house. Well, we did tell you yesterday that we don't want to do anything around your son, hence why you came to us. So I don't know why you think that's going to change. That and or me not just show up back home. <coughs> I'm sorry, what? That or what? Me just not show up back home. She is so badly trying to ask if she's under arrest without asking if she's under arrest. Now, here's the thing. Most people are not going to find themselves in this scenario here, this exact scenario, right? Of like, you have been accused of taking your partner's high pipes, getting them into a suitcase. I understand that. What I'm trying to get at is it's going to be a normal human, like self-preservation. You wouldn't know if you're getting arrested, right? The period, end of story. Am I being arrested? Am I being detained? Where are we at, right? Now that question should have been brought up a while ago with her, okay? I see how this played out. Now also, who we hear off camera is Kelsey, the detective, the female detective. We've seen her get on the stand. We've all kind of fallen in love with her, right? She just has this like level of snark, okay? And so in this thing right here where she's like, are you trying to ask me how to not get accused of a crime? <laughs> it's her level of snarkiness is just like next level, right? So with Sarah here, it's so fascinating to see even in a moment of high stress, because I would argue that this is an incredibly stressful moment for someone in Sarah's shoes. She still has that calculated thing. And if you go back and remember some of the interviews, some of the testimony that we've seen, you're know, hearing from George's family where they were like, look, the Sarah you're seeing on the stand is not Sarah. She is very calculating. She's very conniving. You're seeing a facade basically right those are my words not george's family's words and you can clearly see that now now also what we've seen too in this is sarah is employing the use treating her son lucas almost as if he is a device right i don't want lucas to, and nothing to happen in front of lucas lucas this lucas this lucas that whatever well we've heard testimony from brian her ex-husband and as well as from sarah's own words the way that their days would go and brian is sad yeah you know what we had the split custody but i would have to call to make sure she was even going to pick him up and that she she just wasn't gonna say, eh, you go ahead and keep him for my time. You know, can't make it today. Now, Sarah would tell you on the stand that this because she might have, you know, a job interview or this or that, but you can piece together her daily activities. And honestly, it's probably good that she didn't pick Lucas up. It's probably, they probably weren't in a state to have a child around. But nonetheless, what I'm getting at is you see in these moments of her desperation where she's using him as this device. So you can only imagine what like daily life would be like on a microscopic scale, if you will, and the times where she might have used him to you know, get what she wants. That's what, oh, he's so happy that I'm staying over at the house with Brian. Like, so happy. And I'm not going back to the house, to my house, for however long I can stay over here because of whatever to blow over. Mm -hmm. And again, if you don't mind me asking, so for whatever it is you all are claiming from the videos, which, yeah, it's... Is that what you're going to tell them? Like, his parents? It's like, oh, yeah, and by the way, she did. Did what? I mean, what would you tell him? I don't think it really matters what we're going to tell the parents. Oh, yeah, it is. It's steel to the fire. Well, we can't hide things, and I don't know. I, I'm not saying we're going to go... <clears throat> I'm not saying that we're going to go and tell them every single thing we have, um, but again, 
this is the Orange County Sheriff's Office that's public record, so eventually, like, this all will come out. Mm -hmm. So, it does, like, I'm not, matter of time. you're making it sound like we're going to tell them something, so then your life is in danger, and I don't like that accusation. No. So, let's just nip that in the butt right now. Well, that's what's going to happen. Ouch. So, yikes. Again, at this point, we have seen the text message, some of that forensic digital evidence, if you will. Whew, not a cute look for Sarah, okay? <laughs> not a cute look. We've seen the way she talks to George's mother. We've seen the way she talks to his family members. It's horrible. It's racist. It's not it's bad, okay? It's horrible. Again, completely understand. It's kind of bad in her shoes to be like, are you going to tell his family what happened on that video. And this is another little micro confession, if you will, if that's even a thing. I don't know. Maybe that's, I don't know if that's a word, but we're going to use it for this video. She knows it's not good. Okay. And I remember this is five, four, almost five years before where we're at now. Okay. She just was convicted of the crime. She would have you think she was, she's lying to the police officers. Now she's basically covering up. She's doing this. She's doing that. Cause she had bad her spouse syndrome. She didn't know she was justified this and the other. She knows that video is bad. You cannot say anything about that video. It speaks for itself in this moment. Like you have to really cook something up, which she took several years to do and clearly it didn't work so you hear the detective like we're gonna nip this in the bud because you're trying to make it out like we're putting you on front street you know to do whatever and you hear sarah like well that, i mean that's what you're doing that's what's gonna happen if you're that scared of them i would never speak even on text message the way that she did with his mother okay can you imagine being scared of somebody's family and then talking to their mother in the way that she did? Please. You know what I mean? Like, and I get where it's like, well, that's drunk Sarah, but nonetheless, right? What I'm getting at is if something were going to have happened, I think she would have elicited that. If we go based on like the things that she said, you know, she's caused uh, George's brother to attack him, you know, over her claiming that, you know, oh, George hit me, George did this, whatever the case was, right? So she wills this power, but she also doesn't want that to be turned around on herself, right? I cannot... But, I we can not choose, but we can't even, but so <coughs> technically there's no concrete report yet, even. Right. So, so it's, um, you want me to like, I'm telling you exactly what I'm going to tell them. I don't know what I'm going to tell them. I don't know what I'm going to tell them. Let's just leave it at that. Just like, you don't know why you went upstairs. I don't know what I'm going to tell them. So, can, that are dealing with can I do, can I call you the way that I did last time? <laughs> yeah, my phone is an open line. Maybe he should be here. I don't watch TV. Yeah, I get it. Look, I get it. That looks really bad. Mm -hmm. So that's what scares me. Like, what do I need to plan on? Like, what do I need to plan on? I promise you, on my son's life, it was not intentional. She really likes to promise on her son's life. And again, she's just saying everything. What do I need to plan? What do I need to plan? I don't know why she just doesn't say, am I being arrested? But I guess she doesn't want to put the idea in their mind, maybe. I'm not sure. Now, you see the detective here. She's pregnant. She's obviously, she, if you've watched this before, she coughs the entire time. Yeah, she's not feeling good is what we're getting at. Now, one thing that is of interest that I think that I'm finding here, and y'all help me out through this in the comment section. Okay, so remember how Sarah was talking about like, oh, well, the detective told me to call her. And so I called her and was like, hey girl, when am I getting that phone back? And she's like, well, hey girl, I'm pregnant and sick. Why don't you come down here? And you had that whole conversation with the detective saying, um, that part never happened. I never said that. Like I never, whatever it was about like, come down here because I'm pregnant, I don't feel good. Like whatever that the interaction was. But you just heard Sarah say, do I call you like last time, which was clearly just a way to see if they're gonna like, she's filling them out to see if she's gonna be free, you know, that kind of a thing. And she's like, yep my phone's an open line. So I'm like, she's agreeing that she called, like the way I took that was she agrees that she called her. So again, help me out here is, but she could also be talking about just the phone line to the office. I'm kind of answering my question as I go, because I was like, maybe she really did do that phone call. Now who knows what was said on it, right? But she could also be meaning she, the detective is referring to the office phone. I, I don't know, right? I just thought that part was kind of like a little bit funky where the detective is like, you know, oh no, I didn't say that or do that or whatever it was. And I mean, oftentimes we see where the detectives will be like, here's my cell phone. If you have more information, call. You know, and of course Sarah's blowing their phone up. Hey, uh, I feel like y'all are tricking 
tricking me. You know, were you doing this for that? You know what I mean? Like just completely telling on herself, right? That's the whole thing that I find confusing. Now, does it matter? No, it's not here or there because if you follow me, you'll know I've stated, I feel like the detectives in this case did a great job and they did what they had to do and the way they had to do it to lessen the risk of fleeing, self-harm, and harm to others in a situation like this where they know they're going to arrest her, right? They've seen the evidence. It's a wrap. I promise you, okay. on Lucas's life, it was not intentional. <clears throat> I don't know you. I can't say I know anything about you. I don't know what is what would be a true statement, what would not. I mean, you're promising on your son's life, that's fine. That's how much it means. Sorry. That's how I'll much it look, too. That's how much it means. Okay. I hope you take that to heart. Please. It's documented that you said that, yeah. I get it. She is absolutely not giving Sarah what she wants and you know it's driving Sarah crazy. It would anybody who's trying to get, get information out of the person, right? She will not, it's documented. I mean, she's so flippant, right? You know what I'm saying, the detective, right? She just has this like, mm, yeah. And what was interesting is meeting her again years later, she, that's just like her demeanor, right? I think I said in the live chat where she has this like quintessential kind of pouty like, Hmm. You know, that just really works for what she's doing. Like, almost like she's, you can tell she's one of those people that can easily separate herself from work to be like, we've got this. It's highly, you know, maybe emotional or whatever. And she can very much just be like, Psh. but also they know. Again, the evidence speaks for itself. Sarah's tried to talk her way out of this where it's like, honey, I mean, your boyfriend's saying he can't breathe. You're laughing at him and cussing at him. And then you go fall asleep. And then want to talk about what a tragic incident it was for you finding him that way right going back over it again you so we know now right that her the lawyers went with this bss syndrome you know battered spouse syndrome self-defense all these variations of this what we've seen in this video here where she starts off it was an accident not intentional not intentional so on and so forth okay so that being said looking back over the whole thing like in these moments whatnot where she's like trying to get this information and trying to do this and trying to do that i cannot believe and this is the psychological part that fascinates me how convinced she was that she was gonna walk to the point that she turned down a sweet deal at the last minute after five years 15 years that they gave her offered her i should say and just this evidence alone before you even get to the text messages before you even get to all the other video evidence, just this interrogation, seeing this, you know her lawyers were like, there's no way, and that's, you can clearly see now where the breakdown occurred, why she went through nine lawyers. Do you have any idea when I can get my phone back? No telling. What do you say? I just said no telling. I mean, it's, our digital forensics unit is, uh, got a lot of cases on their plate, I mean, well, and that's not trying to be my laptop, it's Lucas's laptop. Okay. But he plays, you'll see all the games that he has on there. As soon as we can get that back to Lucas, we will. As soon as we can release your phone, we will. But it doesn't, we have no way of being able to tell you because we don't have control over their caseload and how they, they arrange what they do. So I don't know. And at this point, I think, honestly, with everything else that's going on, that should probably be, be at the bottom of your list of worries. I'm trying to make Lucas happy so he can have his laptop back. Okay. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm trying to make Lucas happy. Again, I get it. Anybody would be squirming. Anybody would be wanting to find out, am I going to get arrested? 100%. That's like, I feel you, Sarah, okay? 100% get it. But watching what we know now, and it's like sitting here, and I'm like, girl, you ain't ever getting that phone back. I mean, look at what she went through in court trying to get her hands on it. She so desperately wanted to get her hands on that phone. Whatever evidence, and what we, not whatever evidence, we now know she thought the videos that they showed that she took were going to seal the deal. She was so disconnected. She had zero awareness that those videos would make her look even worse, right? In her mind, she probably thinks that the suitcase, even though she's saying it's bad, it's bad. I could see her being able to convince herself, no, this shows that I'm a victim. She did. She tried to address it. Well, while he was upside down, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk to him. And I'm like, talk to him? You were screaming and cussing and mocking him in the most slurred, drunken voice you could conjure up. But she somehow twisted it to think that it was going to work for her. Did yeah. Brian not have a laptop for him? 
he has his laptop that he has to do for work, okay. but he doesn't want him using it or breaking or dropping. It's not a big deal. There's nothing on the laptop anyway. So you will keep me posted, like updated. Mm -hmm. The silence is so awkward, so awkward. Now remember, they're waiting on the person to come down and do the nail swabs, right? They heard that part too, where she's like, it doesn't matter, there's nothing on it anyways. And it's like, well, girl, you said that about your phone. I mean, look at the one thing they found, right? They're gonna wanna look at it. That's my thing, is I'm trying to figure out what I need to do in the meantime. I don't know, I can't. Like, I don't know what to tell you, though. Like, what am I, what? But you all have more information than I do where it's, <coughs> yeah, you might want to, or yeah, you might want to. I'm sorry, what? Like, we have more information on what? Like, we told you everything that we have. You know everything that we know. And most of it we got from you. But that, like I was telling her, like, yeah, that's bad. Like, which I swore in my son's life was not intentional. So that's why I'm trying to figure out what I need to do for myself. Okay. Going forward with this, nonetheless, with his family. And are you all just showing up with Lucas and the house? Well, I think we've already both told you that we would be mindful of any situations. Yo, it is 9.22 a.m. here. I'm. It's too early for this cringe. I didn't know the cringe was gonna be even worse, like, now, you know what I'm saying? Like, now that she's been convicted, like, it's we know, okay, like, the looming thing is hanging over her head and that we've seen her on the stand and all that. Again, what's really sticking out to me, this is how much she's relying on her son as an excuse. Now, we've also heard testimony as well at this point of the way she would get, like, bills paid, like, you know, Okay, Brian, well, you know, we can't pay the hot water. You want Lucas to have hot water? You know, you need to pay the bill. You know, this was, again, he was a device. I'm not saying she didn't have some kind of genuine love for him, maybe. I don't know her. I don't know any of them personally. I can't say. I'm not some psychotherapist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. But just from, like, the spidey sense or whatever, I'm like, I'm sure she loved her son on some level. But I'm sure, like everybody else in her life, she used them as a tool, as a mechanism, as a form or a currency of manipulation. So you guys, I guess you're going to call me tomorrow? Or do we need to come back down here? I'll chat with you next time. I have no idea when I'm going to call you next. Uh, isn't the report coming out tomorrow? No. What report? I'm just saying a report is generated through us and the sheriff's office is a public entity. So if someone were to come request something, then... No, I'm talking about um, his autopsy. She's waiting and doing our follow-up, but... She's looking at him again. <coughs> yeah. But she won't be finished with him because she's, she's pending for other stuff. So after this, what? I'm done? For now? Oh, you're done. <laughs> now we're on the right track, girl. You're done. <laughs> What's that TikTok sound? Oh, you're done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again, it's like, you know, it, it was, it, it's like watching a train wreck. It's so cringy because, you know, and I, notice how careful they're being with what they say. Sarah would have you think that they're these super tricky devices and all that, and they're being very careful with their words, talking about, when will we see you again? It'll be me you talk to again next. They are not Sam. But again, they need to get this stuff off her nails. They have to keep the situation de-escalated. You know, it is what it is. How long does this stuff take to get back? The Most FGLD of that you, you won't get back. The swabs and stuff will, will stay. But I don't know about it? Sorry. Our dispatch center keeps calling my phone. And I keep having to have other people call them to see what they need. Uh, 
I hope you all can really both truly understand that that was not my intent. I miss him a lot. Only now does she say, I miss, she offers, I miss him a lot. How deep are we into this, right? Like almost two hours, okay? At this point, I'm like, just stop saying that. I'm like, I would be praying for the nail person to come in, right? Like, this is so painful. I would like to think that both detectives are blowing her up. Like, get your butt in here. Like, this is like, she's not going to talk. We've hit a stalemate. We've hit the wall. She's not saying anything. But again, notice only now do we start seeing this like, you know, I miss him. No, she doesn't. Mm -mm. On to the next, I'm sure. I mean, no I, it, but my question has remained the same. What do you expect to happen to somebody when you leave them in a position like that? <coughs> yes, but you have to understand too. I know. No, no, just what would you expect to happen to somebody when you leave them in a position? I have no idea because I've never done it before. Why have you ever done it before? Why would I? Exactly. Why, Why would I do you? it before? Why did you do it now? I, I, I clearly have said why. I, why? No, you don't know never, why. You, never, you just know that it's not intentional, yeah. but you don't know why. But that's okay. Really? I'm not trying to force you to say something that you don't know. Fading and penning. Ouch. I mean, you see the way they just walk her into it. She won't say because, again, I don't think she really... For Sarah, so here's the thing. Watching what we've watched now, she can't, probably in her world, she can't really say why she did it because the answer is so vile, right? And it's so much deeper than... George did blank. I did... He got five in the Samsonite, right? Shoulder pads ignite. Five in the Samsonite. <laughs> okay. Literally. That is like how this whole case is gone, okay? She can't say that, right? Because it's way more layered than that, okay? The, the evidence that we saw in the videos, the time of her we saw on the stand, which she was lying through her teeth on the stand, this whole thing about I was fearful, all that video evidence shows a very aggressive human being towards George at very random times, like where it's just like, that's just how she is. And so to me, the reasoning why she put him in the suitcase why she left him because i do think that she i don't think he got in there on his own maybe physically but i do not think they played hide and seek and he ran and got in the suitcase is what i'm getting at i think she manipulated him you better get in there or else george we're gonna do this activity or i'm gonna do this and used her weapon the phone recording him like we saw so that's what i'm getting at when i say she forced him in there whatever that's what i mean by it's so much more layered it, it goes into so much of a depth of a levels of abuse that she was inflicting on him it's not as simple as shoulder pads unite five and the samson eye it's just it's way more layered than that's what i'm getting at. i keep repeating myself and i apologize so that's what's interesting watching it now is because i'm like oh yeah i mean she she can't say and because that's her way of life it's just what she seems to how she takes up space in her world how she maneuvers through the world and again her currency in the world she probably doesn't see anything wrong with that and she can't say but she let it slip a little bit earlier well, i figured i'd give him five in there that's where i got that you know five in the samsonite it was a form of punishment but she had various forms we for example i feel like the one of the punishments was waking him up at 1 20 a.m the video we saw of him sleeping in the hallway you know she had very call your daughters that's another form of punishment ripping his birth certificate up all these things that she did to isolate this man were that so in this moment right here she can't sit here and say oh he tried to hit me so blank i left him in there and went to bed you know and in her world it's what wasn't intentional but most people don't arrive at that moment sarah most people don't play hide and seek drunk and when their partner says i can't breathe i can't breathe oh my god let me out laugh at them but she's not capable of talking her way out of that because you can't talk your way out of it let's keep going that you guys would assume that I'm that kind of person. We're not assuming anything. We're going by the facts. It happened. Like you said, you don't know me. The silence. 
suspense is killing me, but I want it to be there. It's like, I want to experience, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like re-experiencing this, like every moment of it. The fact that she says, the fact that you guys assume, like assume that I'm that type person. Well, what do you want us to think? It's interesting if you look at how separate she sees herself from the action. Now I get, does that action define her life? No, right? I mean, well, kind of now at this point. But you see what I'm saying? Where I, I get where it's like, okay, people are more multifaceted than I did this one thing. I did this mistake over here or whatever the case is, right? But this one has such deep implications to it is what I'm getting at. And again, the fact that she's just like, that, that y'all would think that, you know, I would do that. Like, you, you don't even know me. I mean, what are they supposed to think? In itself, for me to have to live with getting him out and doing what I did is punishment enough. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. I mean, you hear this punishment enough. She hints at these things throughout, which is, you know, you could go in two different directions because if you look at the defense that she went with, which was, well, she didn't know. She was afraid that she would get in trouble. She didn't know that she was justified. So she was lying. She was trying to hide this and that. I'm more of the frame of mind of the guilty conscience. You know what I mean? The... I know what I did was wrong. I know that there, this absolutely not. This is completely bizarre. You know, that you don't lock your captor up and berate them and then go upstairs and go to sleep thinking they're going to come up there and then turn around and say you were afraid they were going to kill you. It, no, right? Her level of trying to pick at these cops, it's killing her. One thing that's fascinating with this and one reason why I'm enjoying, when well, I'm enjoying, but why I'm just letting the whole thing play is watching her in these moments of silence because there's a lot of stress going on for her. There's a lot of probably anxiety. I'm guessing like a feeling of out of control. This is a woman who's always in control, always driving the ship, always doing all the things, right? This unknowing is making her unhinged, okay? And it's so awkward. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And again, the cops are just kind of, I mean, I get that they're more used to residing in a moment of anxiety like this. And um, these awkward, you know, they know what's getting ready to happen type things. But nonetheless, it's just, it's so completely like off the scales with cringe for me. I think that's why I haven't slept. Because that's all I see. So that right there says something. Not my intention. The fact that she like keeps following up with that I haven't slept, that right there says something. It all works it's like, yeah, you're guilty. You feel bad, right? But again, psychologically speaking, it's fascinating to see how much her universe revolves just around her. Of course, like we're all human beings, right? Of course, we are gonna be the center of our own universe. I get that. But like the part, I guess, that, that I find like extra with her is that she's using these tactics that probably work with her on people that she knows are in the general public, which is I'm the victim, feel bad for me, look at how hard I have it, whatever. And she's trying to employ this on these detectives and especially at this stage where I'm like, honey, you should take the temperature, like they're done, okay? Do not say one more word to these people. Do not try and talk your way out of it. Do not say anything else. This is just going to be very, very bad for you. Continuing forth. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Nonetheless, I have to live without him now. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. Punishment in itself. Yeah. Definitely uh, a tragic situation. I am through with alcohol. And it's unfortunate that stupid things like this happen. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Absolutely. Nonetheless, I have to live without him now. Mm-hmm. I might make the thumbnail nonetheless. <laughs> I forgot about this part. Again, I have to live without him. I'm done with alcohol. Making bargains with God and the cops. If you just let me get away with it this time, I won't do it again. Imagine if she, imagine if she walked out. I guess she thinks if she makes them feel bad enough for her, they're gonna let her go, right? And again, we, no, but like, she doesn't know, right? I mean, I'll give her that. It's this kind of like, mm. I guess one thing that I would have asked at a certain point which again, from the ease of the sofa, I get it. Am I free to go? Like, that's really all she needs to say is, am I free to go? Like, are we done? Like, can I leave after this? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's this whole topsy to everything and she's trying to make him feel bad, this and the other. And again, it's stupid things. Like, I'm done with alcohol. Stupid stuff like this happens. And again, to wrap it up and an excuse now on the stand of, I was scared, so I was lying. Really? It doesn't seem like that. This doesn't seem like covering up for your abuser or covering up to avoid, like, no matter what, he's dead. No matter what, there's evidence of you do, you know, assisting in this, doing this, like, you know, turning your back on him. So that part right there, I'm like, what, you know, wh where do you think you're going to go with this at this point? Yeah, his daughter's too. Are you trying to make it worse? Sorry, what? Are you trying to make it worse? Make what worse? <laughs> how I feel. Okay, let's stop there before we get into this part. Are you trying to make it worse? I love how he just said that. Yeah, his daughter's too. And then Sarah, are you trying to make it worse? I mean, it's just, I don't know if I've ever seen an interrogation this unhinged in this way, okay? Just someone so dismissive as her, so self-centered as her. Poor George. I understand that there was, this was not a good relationship going both ways, right? I, I get it, okay? What we have seen that she put this man through, because remember, she controlled everything, right? She had the house, she got the money from Brian, she was controlling everything. She had all of George's documents, she got them for him and controlled them. He was beholden to her. She could have said, hey, this man makes me unhappy. It's time to end this at any moment, right? Not to say that he wasn't maybe coming back or doing this. I get it, right? Two to tango in many situations. But this is just, you can tell, she doesn't give two, you know what, that this man is gone. It, unless it's trying to pivot sorry for herself in this moment. And then she took your So I'm just going to take a swab and go around on one hand and then do the separate one for your other hand. Okay. One thing that I think with these, you know, things like this that we watch with the workers and whatnot, and we're just gonna let this play for a minute while she's continuing this. So a couple of things. First of all, the little bag stuff that they do where it's like this big brown bag for this. It's very ASMR to me, you know what I mean? But secondly, like this young lady coming in here to do Sarah's fingernails, I'm watching her and I'm like, I wonder if like in her mind, not Sarah's, but the young lady, the uh, the police person, if she's like, you know, okay, I gotta stop at the grocery store today. Things that you like you normally, like any of us like at work or whatever, go over in our heads. Like if she's doing that, but I'm like, 
does she know like is this does she even know any like thing of what's going on with sarah or whoever might happen to be there or is it just like nope i this is my job i'm coming up i'm doing a swab and whatnot now we know also at this point that when they did the they ran all this stuff or whatever in the trial that came out where it was like well there's no dna and no this and that remember sarah has had what you know a, a bit of a day if you will to have washed hands think we hope at least right things of this nature also remember that George had marks on his back and she said, oh, I know what those are from. Those are from adult activities. You know, so I'm not sitting here saying she's making that up or this or that or that it's weird she didn't have any of his dna and her nails or things like that because she could have very well washed that away whatever it was but nonetheless at this point in time for sarah i would think it's getting very real with this going on in this moment we will talk a little bit thank you <coughs> Okay, Sarah. So you're not free to go. Okay. Oh, um, do you promise everything you told us is the truth? Or no? <coughs> everything we've talked about today? Yes. What do you mean? I, I, I he asked to swear. Remember how I swore you yesterday on the on the audio recording? I just forgot, so he raised his hand to remind me to tell you. Okay. Do you promise and swear that everything we talked about today has been true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? For which true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? What that it wasn't intentional? Everything, everything you've said you today, us. everything that's come out of your mouth has been true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. To the best of my knowledge. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Ouch. Okay, y'all, buckle your damn seatbelts up for a boatload of cringe, because here we go. Okay, it's all come down to this moment, okay? The way that Kelsey was, like, standing up, like, okay, Sarah, well, you're not free to go. <laughs> You know, Sarah was like, but she knew it was good. She's been hinting around this whole time, right? But no, look, this gives me goosebumps, right? This moment, like, of, I don't know if you want to call it justice, or, or just satisfaction of seeing, like, all, especially now, all that we've seen, all that we've gone through, we've finally heard from his family, we've seen the videos, he's told his story, right? And this is one thing that kind of attracts me to true crime, is when we see for the victims and whatnot, especially when the perpetrators who, like anybody who would do something like this, they don't want to go to prison, they want to get away with it, right? Of course they do. But when we see these moments that come through in these cases where it's like the victim is talking from the grave, they're telling their story, they're telling us what to do and what to look at. And, you know, again, I get it, Sarah is one who recorded these videos but nonetheless it's like when we go full circle when we first were introduced to this video we didn't know all that stuff we didn't see all that stuff we knew we knew this was not like we knew it was bad we didn't know how bad it was how much abuse this man had suffered at her hands so to see this moment with this detective who's like yeah you're not free to go doesn't matter how many ways you ask me doesn't matter okay you ain't going home girl why that's how you <laughs> to assure that everything that we've talked about is true and accurate to, to the, the best, best of that person's knowledge. knowledge. It's not a trick question. To the best of my knowledge? To the best of your knowledge. Everything that you've told us today is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes, but it was not intentional. Okay. Okay, like I said, here we go. She's doing it. She's doing it. She's doing it. She's getting ready to arrest her. She's getting ready to arrest her, y'all. This is the moment. This is the moment. Again, not intentional. Not. That's all she knows to say. I really feel like a couple of things. I wish they had Google, like, done her Google searches because I felt like she stayed on Google the whole night and was like, she latched onto that word, right? The same way as when we saw her on the stand where she was like, you know, split second decision, split second decision. I was like, she's researched this. She sat there at the table with the book, with the battered spouse syndrome book, looking up like, what do I need to say? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it makes this even more satisfying. Okay. All right, do me a favor, stand up. <coughs> I need you to turn around, face the wall, put your hands behind your back. Do you have anything in your pockets that I should know about? No. Okay. Why is this happening? Because George is dead. I love that part. Why is this happening? Because George is dead. Look at the damn video, right? It's that level of... Also, when you... I'm jumping around here. I mean, literally, this has me pressed, y'all. Think of his family watching this, his daughters 
right? Imagine his daughters seeing this, seeing this woman who we've seen how she talked to him. We've seen what Sarah said. Sitting here, why is this happening? Really? I mean, and I get like, if you're in Sarah's shoes, you would be, I mean, I understand that where you would be like trying to question it. You're not wanting to go, you know, to jail. I get that, but it's just, it blows my mind, blows my mind. Okay. Let's finish watching this moment of satisfaction. I won't interrupt that swagger. Not intentionally. We understand that. She's still there. Well, we don't Someone really needs to call that. Brian, please. Okay. Or can I not make a phone call? You'll be able to make a phone call when we get you down to the jail. So why is this happening? So this was a trick. No, it's not no, a trick. How was a trick? So <coughs> I came in here to ask you to explain a few things to us. Uh -huh. and you were right, you're right. Your response to everything was basically, I didn't do it. Intentionally. It doesn't matter. It's still there. Do me a favor. Have a seat. <coughs> really, guys? Really? So if I didn't show up? Really? Really? <laughs> so if I didn't show up, we would come to your house and get you. Not we would just forget about it. Did someone call Brian? Not intentionally. This is the thing with this right here. And yeah, you know, one of the thoughts that came to my mind watching this, I was like, what a hard life that must be to have gone through life somehow maneuvering, getting what you want and whatnot, and then to hit a place where your back is against the wall. You can't talk your way out of it. You can't manipulate your way out of it, right? Now, she was able to drag it out for year after year, you know, but you saw how that ended. When you go, when you're able or however, like whatever you want to call it, where she was enabled to live her life this way or whatever, and then you arrive in this moment where you finally are told no, where you're finally told something you, whatever. That's a tough life right there. But you know what? Guess his life was tougher. George, who's still alive. You know what I'm saying? Why are is it trying? happening? Because before y'all said I could leave. When that I was done after yeah. this, after that. We were done, yes. We were done. Absolutely. So now, so that's what it is. We are done. Right. Correct. We were done. <laughs> we are done. There's no lie there. Where is the lie? Right. I love this. Yep. Yep. That's correct. We are done. Any other questions? Do you want the manager? We are not accepting those coupons today, Sarah. Those are expired. Shoulder pads. Retreat. This is a wrap. Not intentional. Okay. So what am I supposed to do now? You would... Someone needs to call Brian. Okay. Lucas is waiting for mom to come home. Lucas, wait for mom to come home. <laughs> Honey, you probably, if you had been left to your own devices, would have just left him at school and told Brian to get him. You know what I'm saying? Like, the level of manipulation. Look at how she's looking at him. Not intentional. She's looking at him right now. You're getting 10 in the Samsonite when I get out of here, buddy. You mark my words, and it will be an overhead size. This was not my intention. I thought I was waiting for you all to come and figure out what's what and how many. That's what we're trying to do. And I was going to be able to go home and see Lucas. <laughs> Now he's just not going to have me come home. So there's nothing that I can do. I don't know. There's nothing that I can do in order to go home and see Lucas and prepare. Not right now, no. You'll be afforded a time in court. You'll be afforded an attorney. You'll be afforded a chance to talk to a judge. And all that stuff will be worked out. But what's the time frame for that, though? I, I have no way of being able to tell you. You should make first appearance probably by tomorrow morning, if not tonight, depending how things are busy, how quickly you get down there. Oh, the things we know that they didn't know them. You'll, you'll get an attorney. Yeah, about nine of them. How long does it take? Five years. So there's nothing I can do. Ah, pfft, no, absolutely not. Someone needs to call Brian. The things we know, the things we know, the things we have lived through vicariously through this looking at this now, where she is just blindsided, you know, absolutely feels manipulated by them, absolutely feels tricked zero concept that what she did was wrong literally thinks because in her world it was an accident that just let me go home i promise i won't drink for a week we'll take a week off the club <laughs> you know what i'm saying we'll take a week off the club we'll be back next weekend just not this weekend and then we'll act like nothing happened okay i, don't, I have I don't a work suspicion in that's just gonna happen okay. and i need water like really bad please How
Yeah, I'll check me down here. <coughs> Absolutely did not. I just got those. Okay. They are not allowed in the jail. So I can't even smoke cigarettes <coughs> I go. That hit hard right there. I just got those. Oh, she is ticked. She is ticked. You heard her. You trick. She does really believe. And I, I have no doubt that they probably got tricky to get her down there. But again, it's like, what do you want them to do? Hey, Sarah, we're going to arrest you. Could you come on down here? Imagine she might be the type to take Lucas, Lucas hostage. You know what I'm saying? Or hit the road. Like, you don't know, right? I mean, I want to put anything past her. Yeah, we've seen it all. We, we've absolutely seen it all. So it's like, well, yeah, they're going to have to do what they have to do. But again, it's just like, look at the video like that's the part that blows my mind is it's just like on the video i mean what do you think people would think and i mean they asked for that question again she just goes back to not intentional they heard her also say i had sneaking suspicion this would happen why remember looking back through the filter battered spouse syndrome i lied to the cops I was afraid I'd get in trouble with all this stuff. You see it coming through here, her personality. Again, imagine that these were two retail workers at the grocery store who had just refused her coupons. Or worse yet, tried to car ID her for a jug of wine and she left her ID at the house. Please. Wrath of Satan would come out. What? Am I good on that? She is fucked up. And what am I supposed to do with my car? Can you find where it is? When you get down there, you'll have free phones, you'll be able to call. What, as soon as possible? Yeah, once you get down in there, get booked in, you'll be able to uh, use a phone in the, in the waiting but how area. long will that take? Because I need to talk to Brian. Yeah. yeah, no, it depends how busy, how quickly they get you through. I probably would say within the hour. It's a free phone yeah. call yeah. In, the, in the lobby. It's a free phone call. All I'm doing is bringing you there and yep. the paper and you're going to She has no clue. So can I ask you, or whoever it is, mm -hmm. Um, those holding cells, the holding cells, mm -hmm. am I going to be putting one of those? Because I don't know. Last time I had a panic attack. Okay. Let them know that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you, you're familiar with the big bay. As long as you go in and you act civil to them, they'll set you in the big bay. And you'll be left there and for Can a you while. request that while I'm there? No, that's not up to us. Mm -hmm. We don't work at the jail. As long as, as, long as, as, long as like you're saying, is you, if you don't if act you go up, in and act like this, you'll go in and they'll put you in the big bay. If you go in there screaming and kicking and yelling and Why cursing at people, that? I don't know. Now, this is the other part. So, I mean, uh, this is a transport officer. This, that's all she's doing, right? It's like, girl, I'm whatever. They're being very nice. And understandably, anyone in the scenario is going to be panicked, right? I get that. I'll give Sarah that, right? If she's panicky. She's, you know, what do we do? How do we do this? But then that part like here where she already starts with the demands. Can you imagine? I mean, we saw some of the behavioral records, right, from the jail. Can you imagine what she was like in that first thing there? Now, she knows enough to reel it in, to not be thrown in the ninja suit, the turtle outfit, you know, in a padded cell or whatever. So she knows to keep it together to some degree. But also, I mean, we've seen over the years where it's just just like she treats this like she is the customer and there's that and honestly I she's gonna have a very rude awakening when she gets sent off to state because she's just had these little mishaps you heard her well last time I had a panic attack she, she's just going a little drunk tank you know what I'm saying drying out getting out whatever she stay property now she's not Sarah Boone she's a number okay they don't care right they're not mm -mm. She is a convicted murderer with a state number. They don't care about her at the, this point. They're not going to put up with her drama. They're just not. She might be able to, she'll find whatever she can manipulate, she will, obviously, right? But this is vastly different from county jail where she's been, where they they have to literally, because remember, in county jail, she's not convicted yet, right? So you, uh, there's a certain level of liability there in the county, in the state at that point, whatever you want to call it, you know? If we mess up and this person's not guilty, whatever, I mean, this is major, you know what I mean? So now I'm not trying to say oh, they can bend over backwards and whatnot. Obviously, there's enough evidence there. I mean, this I get this, right? But nonetheless, she's going to have a very, very rough time, a very, very rough go at it, I personally think, seeing what we have seen of her. I'm just letting you know that's what happens. That's how they, they weed people out. If you go in acting like this. So I ask for the big bang? No. They'll put you there as long as you're acting like this. I, yeah, because the last time I had a major panic attack on okay. the little things. Hey, let me know. Yep. Change the cuffs. Yeah. I have not found So what am I going to do with Thanks my purse? Oh, sorry. Your purse is going to come, but the cigarettes and stuff can't, so. I put, in, I put the lock up, too. My oh, no, it's all good. Mine are now opposite, so. 
What made you all decide to do this? Made us decide to do this? Uh-huh. George is dead. You guys, I knew this was going to happen. You did? Okay. So I came well, down here willingly. Yes, absolutely. What made y'all decide to do this? I knew you were going to do this. Look at the power she tries to take back, right? Where she tries to get it back. We saw her do this in the stand as well with the with the state attorney where she would do these little power plays. Here's the thing, and this is, and again, I've said this if you've been following me for multiple cases, but especially this one, especially this one. When you see a defendant like Sarah who will take zero accountability, now I get right here, this is fresh, this is new, whatever. Years later, she's just doubled down, right? And just found every way to say that this was not my fault or this is why I did it and you should be, feel sorry for arresting me for it. I get that. But right here where she's trying to get that little bit, I knew you were going to do this. Okay, well, why? did I mean, did you do something wrong? You know, why is this happening? Because George's dad. And then the next thing out of her mouth, that, well, I knew you were going to do this. Well, then why are you asking me why we're here? You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make sense. But in her world, I think it's more important to her to be right, to gain power, to gain control, to do this, to do that, than logic is. We were trying to figure out what's going on. We're still trying to figure out what's going on. Unintentionally. Intentionally or not, George is dead. <laughs> You act like when you say unintentionally, that absolves you from everything. I need to get, I have my, I don't know if it's and able to be or not. Oil, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I have things in my car that I need to. Okay. What kind of stuff do you have in your car that you're worried about? Well, I have my medication. Okay, they have a pharmacy there, so if there's something that you have to have right away, You'll be seeing a nurse. It's panic attack stuff. Well, again, when you get checked in, you're going to be seeing a <laughs> nurse. And that they have a pharmacy there, so they'll be able to take care of any kind of that stuff. That protocol is out of my realm. I don't work down there, so I don't know, but I do know they do have a pharmacy. And that you will be afforded to see somebody. Okay? Hold on. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to say no. Yeah. My bad. No. I always expect there to be one last like that, like the closing line on the thing, not intentionally, and then the lights shut off like a theatrical play or something. That's it. <laughs> okay, so let's just talk about it, right? Now let's talk about this last clip we watched first. So her, there's stuff in my car. I need medication. It's panic attacks. She probably has like what, you know, Xanax or whatever you take, you know, those kind of things, whatever. Sure, Sarah, go grab that. We'll wait up here for you. Or even worse, like, oh, we'll go get you your Z oh, Xanax or whatever she's got in there that she wants. Yeah, but again, she's already starting in with this stuff. And I get, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, this we saw the Adelsons do this worried about medication. This is a normal concern. So I'm not trying to single her out in this scenario, whatever. You know, it's just with her, I have this thing or whatever. To, I don't, I don't know. Again, watching this a second time and watching the the interview and going back over making videos of it again at various parts throughout the trial you know in the the recent times is what i'm getting at some key elements that stick out to me and i've said them throughout but we'll just go back over them a little bit here number one the absolute zero accountability you know now again I understand in her position, you don't want to admit to something, you don't want to say something, whatever. She talks and talks and talks and talks. She has no problem talking and talking and talking, 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 right? It's in the wrong way. She would now have us believe that this was all a facade, that this was, she was a battered spouse who had done something in order to survive and she didn't know that what she did was justified so she lied this whole time. That's her excuse, right? When we first saw this, we did not see the videos of her berating George for sleeping outside the bedroom door. We did not see the videos of her telling him to repeat words over and over. We did not see the racist comments that she texted to his mother and family and the horrible things that she said. We didn't see her texting his family and saying, I'm gonna get rid of George and how horrible her life is with him all of the things okay we had not seen yet we just saw this video now we've seen them again right just going back over it there's a level of depravity with her that you know i question with a lot of these defendants even ones who do certain things because this is a little bit different than i can't think of his name right now Do doberman doberman the guy who took a gun and gunned down his entire family, all his sons, pulled one out of his wife's hands. This is different, right? Not saying better or worse, whatever, but we're talking about a different kind of 
taking someone's life, okay? That's what I'm getting at. There's also another level of depravity here because I felt like what we saw with this case with Sarah was almost like this. If she could have had it her way, she wouldn't want George to be dead. She would want to be able to slowly torture him over time, which in my opinion, torture is the word. The evidence that we saw was this like slow just torture now i get is it the same thing as we see you know no right i'm not trying to alleviate someone who's been through something horrible in that way of like true like torture but what i'm talking about is just the way she controlled him the way she owned him i've said this over and over i'm like she talks about him like he's a pet like he's a kid like he's a dog you know i would venture to say she probably treated her dogs better than george we heard the way she talked to him it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And now that we know more, because like at this time, we didn't know the baseball bat thing, right? So we're sitting here watching her knowing, she knows at this point what went down that night, right? She remembers. We know there's injuries. There's a baseball bat involved. There's this and that. So she's sitting here and has the gall. What is this? Why, why are we doing this? That wasn't intentional. Was the baseball bat intentional? And especially at this point, we've heard the state say, we don't have to believe her hide and seek story. The evidence supports that he went down those stairs outside of the suitcase. She probably attacked him with the bat outside of the suitcase. And I, I agree. I think that's what happened. I think that it was a very violent attack attack outside of the suitcase so knowing that and then seeing this right here i mean come on right it's 10 times worse this the utter surprise on her of what's this happening for seriously seeing her need to control is fascinating and watching it from this moment of desperation to a very methodical thought out control manipulation that we saw throughout the court case and on the trial fascinating because this panicky disorganized more angry version of her i think is the more realistic sarah and then we have the other side that was presenting this way i don't think she has the patience level to deal with people in a nice way i think the second she doesn't get what she wants this this is what we see and on the videos that she recorded is what we see what we saw in the trial was a very i'm having to be in my p's and q's and she could barely keep that together with the state you know you saw it poking its head through because she just can't let them win she just can't not have that right last word she can't be wrong she has to be right she has to take control and to take power and i believe that that is what she did with george and it was a collision course that was bound to end in this way i've said this in my other videos and i'll end this with this i think that those people who knew them personally george's family probably brian they saw this crash coming they didn't know what the crash was going to look like which car would strike first First, what, what who the survivors would be what long-term injury you know all that stuff right with the analogy but nonetheless they saw it coming it was bound to happen we just didn't know how and sadly it happened in this way george somehow for some reason was made and i'll say was made i do believe she made him get in the suitcase and he was then mocked he was then laughed at he was struck he was beaten and he sat there and slowly died in the coffin that Sarah made for him. She is right where she belongs. I think it will take her decades to ever make any kind of a change or take accountability for her actions. So I think the judge is gonna throw the book at her. I think he is gonna read her to filth as the kids might say. Okay, so that is it. I do appreciate you rewatching this with me. Probably what I will do is now that we've gotten through the second time of this is you're seeing this like part five or whatever this is. I'll have it put together in one long thing to do a massive thing or whatever. So when I'll put a little thing at the beginning of it saying like, hey, you know what? If you've watched this before, don't watch it again. Not that you can't watch it again, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't want people to get it. Haven't I seen this or whatever? But some people like the full-on version. So that being said, that is it. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. At this time, we do not have a sentence yet, so we're going to still be following her. We are 100% we're going to be following her over the years. She will be in the headlines. We haven't heard the rest of it. I very much would love to hear from jurors. I'd very much love to hear from his family. So we'll see. But that's it. Let me know what you think downstairs in the comment section below. Below. If you could drop a little sofa off for myself, Roscoe and Spirit, Bo and Luke are at home being babysat so that my little family over here can come down to the little family in the comment section to hang out and until we do meander our way down there to hang out and do all that.
We'll see y'all soon. I just wanted to say thank you again for watching the whole video and also thank you for being part of the Sofa Squad. Special thanks to all the Patreon members, channel members from both of my channels, everybody who likes, shares, subscribes, comments in the comment sections. It helps the channel out so much. Now don't forget, I do have that other channel, the podcast channel. That's where we go live, we hang out, we talk. Uh, we have kind of sort of a schedule, but just be sure and check it out. I'll put it up here on the screen. Also, if you're looking for merch, be sure to check out my Teespring store i'll put that up here and then like i said in the beginning of the video if you want to follow me and roscoe on the insta on the gram on the instagram go on check it out it's right here on the screen again but once again thank you very much i really appreciate you being part of the sofa squad and i'll see you in the next video